All right, welcome to the Bible in Five. We are uh, right smack in the middle of the book of Samuel, First and Second Samuel. Remember, it's one book that's been split into two parts. And uh, you, if you're following the reading plan, you are right in the middle of uh, the storyline here. So you recall that uh, the book of Samuel covers the period of transition between uh, the judges, which are like tribal rulers, to Samuel the prophet who appointed Israel's first king. And Israel's first king, Saul, was a tragic figure. And so because of his character flaws, he begins his downfall very quickly, as just as David, uh, Israel's second king, comes to success and to fame. And so it's as David is being pursued by Saul, who's trying to kill him through the wilderness, that David patiently waits for God to bring him to the role of Israel's king. And that's what happens uh, here at the break between the two books. So right here at the beginning, Saul is killed in battle and David, opposite of what anybody would expect, David uh, writes a lament and poem of lament uh, over Saul and Jonathan, his son's death. And so the book begins with Saul, uh, excuse me, with David lamenting over the death of the very man who was trying to kill him. Again, the author's just beginning by talking and exploring the depths of David's character and what a man of integrity and forgiveness that he was, that he would forgive Saul for doing such a thing. And that's how pretty much the, da the story of David's kingdom uh, starts. And David's story kind of breaks into two main parts here in the book of 2 Samuel. There's uh, the section of chapters 1 through 10 of 2 Samuel, which you, you could call them, this is David under God's blessing. And then uh, in chapters 11 through 21, uh, it's kicked off with a, a huge, huge moral failure on David's part, uh, adultery and murder, which brings him under a curse and his life just falls apart here in the second chapter, second half of the book. So David living under the blessing is a story of how he moves uh, the capital of the people of Israel to the city of Jerusalem. So he makes Jerusalem uh, the center of everything and he names the city Zion. That's where that name comes from. Uh, that happens in these early chapters here of 2 Samuel. And then uh, he has a desire now that he's uh, made Jerusalem the capital, he wants to build a temple for Yahweh, Israel's God. So Israel's God has been dwelling in the tent, the tabernacle that Moses and the people built back in the book of Exodus, you'll remember. And uh, what David wants to do is build a permanent house for God. In chapter 7 here, 2 Samuel chapter 7, you've got to burn this in your memory. This is one of the key chapters in the storyline of the Hebrew Bible. God says to David, he says, you're going to build me a house? Mm, no, I don't think so. I don't really need a house. I'll get a house in my own time. But what God says to David is, I'm going to build for you a house. And he makes a promise to David that the line of descendants that will come from David from this point onward will be an eternal line, that God is going to use the kings of, that come from David to fulfill his promise to Abraham, to bring blessing to all nations, to bring a kingdom and a king who will bring justice and righteousness uh, over all the land. And you can read other Psalms. The book of Psalms explores this promise to David in more detail, uh, Psalm 2. Uh, Psalm uh, uh, 72, Psalm 132. That's a lot of twos, isn't it? I never thought of that before. So uh, it's a very important promise to David. This is ultimately the, where the promise of the Messiah uh, takes another huge step in the storyline of the Bible. So David's under blessing. Everything's going great. He's promised a, a line of kings and the Messiah to come from him. But then he makes a, a fatal move here, literally, of not fatal not for him, uh, but for a guy named Uriah. So David's on his rooftop. He sees a beautiful woman bathing on her own rooftop other in the city. He, you know, takes her. He has sex with her, uh, commits adultery, finds out that she's married, and eventually murders her husband. I mean, it's just a horrible, grisly story. And so what happens immediately, when, uh, when Saul failed miserably, he tried to weasel his way out of it. It's really uncomfortable to watch, uh, to watch Saul try and get out of it. He contrasted with David, who he's immediately confronted after his sin, and he, he recognizes it, he names it, he repents, and he asks God for forgiveness. And God grants him forgiveness, but God does not grant him a get-out-of-jail-free card. Basically, as a result of his horrible decisions, the rest of the story of David is about his family falling apart, his own personal life falling apart, his kingdom falling apart. 
all because of his bad decision. It's a very important lesson about divine forgiveness being taught in these stories here. That even though we might have forgiveness from God, that doesn't necessarily cancel out the consequences of the bad decisions that God's people might make. And so essentially this is David's tragic fall here. David living under the curse and under the consequences of his own bad decisions. And so here as the book ends, it's a very ambiguous ending. David sings a couple of songs here. Uh, songs of, that recount how God has been faithful to him despite his own unfaithfulness. But the book ends uh, with chapter 24 of David making another really bad move of trying to number the troops, a number of warriors in Israel, which shows that he's depending on Israel's military might for his security instead of Yahweh's protection. And so the book ends with David making kind of another, another miserable failure. And even though he repents, he turns back to God, uh, it's a pretty muted note, uh, uh, an ambiguous note that the, book, that the book ends on. It's a very realistic uh, picture of David. So that's the flow of the books of First and Second Samuel. And uh, again, these are very realistic characters. And David is, uh, he's like us. He's uh, sometimes faithful, sometimes unfaithful. And I would encourage you to find your own story, the story of your own spiritual journey of, of uh, sin, of forgiveness, of faithfulness in David's story. It's very powerful. So thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.